Have you ever wanted to run an original Xbox on USB-C? I can already tell half of you said, no, that's ridiculous, why would I ever want to do that? And the other half said, hell yeah, that sounds like a great idea. There's been a growing trend of getting classic game consoles to power off USB-C. Portables are obvious, it's just so much more convenient to charge an old Game Boy or DS with the same infrastructure that a modern phone charges with than whatever proprietary plug they shipped with back in 2004. But even consoles like the Dreamcast and the PS1 have seen USB-C power mods. This is all made possible by the fact that USB power delivery now supports up to 240 watts, enough to power even the first generation Xbox 360. But what's the point? Why do people want to slap USB-C on everything nowadays? Well, there is still the convenience factor even for a console that isn't portable. For a system that ordinarily requires a bulky proprietary power brick, it can be a pain to set up or move around, and there's always a chance you'll lose it in storage and be unable to use the console at all until you either find it or buy a new one. The more stuff you have on a standardized connector like USB-C, the easier it all becomes. But more than that, for consoles with internal power supplies, they're getting old, and their power supplies have been working hard for over 20 years. If they die, you might be able to fix them, or you might just have to replace them, but that can be easier said than done. While to this day you can buy brand new power supply clones for PS2s, most consoles aren't so lucky. For the original Xbox, if you need a new power supply, your only real option is to sacrifice another Xbox's power supply for yours, or pack something together with a PC power supply. USB-C modding can unironically be a means of preserving the console, helping to keep it going after all these years. As for me, I had a slightly different motivation. This is my old Xbox from Australia. It has a lot of my old saves on it, including my nearly complete Burnout 3 save. I haven't touched it much in the last few years because I now live in another country, specifically a country that only provides 120 volts at the wall instead of 230. Knowing I'd have to spend as much if not more on a replacement power supply than just picking up a new Xbox, I didn't bother bringing it with me. But while I was home visiting friends and family, I got offered a review copy of this, the PXU designed by Andro of Team Resurgent, a completely new modular power supply solution for the original Xbox. It would be nice to be able to use my original, original Xbox again. Could this be the solution to my international Xbox woes? Well, let's find out right after a message from our sponsor. If you're in need of a website and don't want to mess around with writing code or having to set up and maintain a server, then Squarespace is one of the easiest ways to do it. They have over a hundred templates to choose from, whether you need a website for an online store, portfolio, business, or blog, Squarespace has you covered and will get you up and running in no time. And if you need to make any customizations, their site editor is a breeze to use, so you can really give your website the personal touch it needs. I used Squarespace for my online store and loved just how easy it was to get a great looking result. It integrated immediately with everything that I needed it to, and it gave me peace of mind to know that my store was in good hands. So if you want a great looking website with no fuss, head over to squarespace.com slash mattkcbytes to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Replacing the Xbox power supply is a pretty straightforward process, but you will need to open your Xbox up, which requires Torx T20 and T10 screwdrivers. If you've never opened your Xbox up before, all of the screws are hiding underneath the four rubber feet and two of the stickers on the bottom. By forcing you to puncture or tear the stickers, they would know if you'd ever opened it and could deny your warranty. Obviously, we don't care about that today. After you've got all six T20 screws, the top should slide off with some encouragement. Once it's open, you'll need to completely remove the hard drive too. It has two cables, one of which you'll need to unroute from the hard drive caddy. The caddy itself is held in with one T10 screw hidden underneath the IDE cable. Once you remove that, it should come out, again, with some encouragement. And you actually don't need to go any further than here, just removing the hard drive gives you full access to the power supply and its connection to the motherboard. Now, as always when dealing with high voltage electronics, you should treat this with a healthy amount of caution. There are big capacitors on the power supply that can continue to hold charge even after the Xbox has been unplugged, so I'd highly recommend waiting at least an hour after unplugging it before handling the power supply so the bleeder resistors have a chance of discharging the whole thing. There are only two T10 screws holding the power supply in, both on the left side, with the right side being held down with just some clips. So after unscrewing, you should be able to slide it towards the front of the Xbox and then lever it up to get the whole thing out. And there we go, one Australian Xbox power supply. Meanwhile, here's the box I was sent. Andrew was nice enough to send me some extra stuff with it too, like a replacement battery for the clock capacitor, an actual battery, not just a power store aerogel as well as an 80 wire IDE cable. You want these if you replace your hard drive with a newer one because the extra wires reduce crosstalk allowing faster speeds. In fact, on the original Xbox, trying to use a fast drive with only a 40 wire cable can cause it to fail detecting the drive at all. But anyway, now to the main event. Here is the new power supply. As you can see, it's a perfect fit for the original, but since it doesn't have to deal with AC power, the board is a lot emptier than the original. 
Depending on how you look at it, this is either a positive, because it'll emit less heat in the box and allows for more versatile power sources, or a negative, because it does require some kind of external box. But at least the external box can be a relatively standard off-the-shelf thing, instead of something proprietary just for the Xbox. Speaking of the external power supply, it doesn't actually have to be USB-C. This plug on the back is modular, and while USB-C fits well into what a lot of people have nowadays, anything that provides 16 to 20 volts and enough wattage for the Xbox can be made to work too, such as a high-end laptop charger. This is useful because the Xbox is fairly power-hungry all things considered, coming in at roughly 100 watts. Your average phone charger is probably only capable of 20 or 30 watts, and even your USB-C laptop charger may only be 65 or 70, even if it's technically capable of charging for more. A 100 watt power supply that the team recommends is, on Amazon, about $35 to $45, making it not particularly cost effective if you don't already have one. But Andrew is a big believer in people being able to reuse what they already have, and plans to provide resources to help people retrofit other power adapters. But even if you do have to invest in a new 100 watt power supply, the major benefit of USB-C is you can easily reuse the power supply for your laptop or phone, so it's theoretically a better investment than just an Xbox power supply. But yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Depending on what you have on hand, this may or may not necessarily be a cost-saving measure. Anyways, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's slot this new power supply in. As expected, it just fits and plugs in as you'd expect. But it's also worth mentioning that there were three revisions of the power supply throughout the life of the Xbox. This project is available for all three, but you'll need to make sure you get the right one. There are a lot of established ways of identifying which hardware revision your Xbox is, and the most reliable is to just open it up and take a look, since you'll need to open it anyway. Thankfully, I do already have a power supply capable of 100 watts in the form of this Hyperjuice charging station. So here comes the moment of truth. Can we run this Xbox completely off USB-C? I will say it feels kind of strange to be plugging a USB-C cable into the back of an Xbox instead of a proper power cable, but I guess that is what I signed up for. Well, 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 it works. Though on the TV it looks broken because this is a power console and the TV is NTSC. But then the soft mod kicks in and it switches over to 480i, and now everything is fine. Hell yeah. Alright, so it powers on, but let's do some more real world tests. Ugh, you mean I have to play video games all day? This sucks! Well, I left it running for about 12 hours, alternating between playing games and leaving it idle. I tried to go for more graphically intensive games to test the limits of the console's power. In that time, it remained solid. I didn't experience any unusual slowdown, any loss of power, anything that would suggest this wasn't an original power supply. Yeah, it's a little anticlimactic, but it just works, exactly how you'd expect. It would probably be worth examining this power supply at an electrical level to examine the voltages and how clean the power signal is going into the Xbox. Unfortunately, that's a little beyond my expertise and the equipment that I have on hand, but Andrew has published his own tests that I'll link in the description, and he is very open and transparent about wanting people to test and throw whatever they can at it. His stated goal is that the voltages from the PXU are no worse than the original power supplies, and for the most part his results seem to show that, with the PXU even improving on them in some areas. But of course some of this depends on the quality of the external power supply you use too. What I can say is, in my experience it works great, and I love the fact that it's modular and can theoretically be made to work with what you already have lying around. Whether you want USB-C specifically or not mostly comes down to whether you see the benefit to a USB-C powered Xbox or not. There are pros and cons for sure, and like I said in the intro, it'll be largely up to your setup and your personal preferences whether the pros outweigh the cons or vice versa. Personally, I could see the benefit of usb c ifying a whole game collection. Being able to swap stuff out and not even have to replace the power cable sounds pretty convenient. If you were travelling to a nerdy convention, you'd only have to pack a single power supply to charge your laptop and phone, as well as power whatever retro console you bring to play with friends. I think this works especially well for lower powered consoles like the NES and Sega Genesis, which both run off 9 volts, a standard USB PD voltage, and both fit comfortably inside the wattage of even the smallest USB-C chargers. Yeah, if you want to see the progression of technology, just compare an old Sega Genesis power supply with a modern USB-C charger and realise the USB-C one produces twice as much power. Due to the Xbox's relatively high power consumption, it's not as natural of a fit to being powered by USB-C, and that's reflected in the fact that you need a high-end power supply and cable for it. But that may change over time as technology continues to develop. Today's high-end MacBooks ship with a power supply that's 140 watts, and over the next few years that may trickle down to the lower-end laptops too. And like I said, even if you did have to invest in a high-end one yourself, you could still use it for a lot of other things too. 
As for the PXU itself, I do think this is probably the best solution to replacing dying Xbox power supplies. While some might criticize its design requiring an additional external power supply of some kind, the fact is a fully integrated power supply of the same quality as the original would make it significantly more expensive. Again, more than just getting another Xbox. If you can use something you already have, it's a lot more financially economical, and to be fair, if you had something that could fit, you probably could integrate it internally and make it look and feel just like the original. As of this video, the PXU is still in the testing phase and not yet available for purchase, but pre-orders should begin fairly soon. Additionally, Andro intends to open source the design when it's done, so anyone can build or extend it as they see fit. As always, it's extremely exciting to see how far the Xbox community continues to take this humble 25-year-old console. I can't wait to see where they take it next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys.